cranberry backcountry. Three day, two night backpacking trip. Thunderstorm warning. At some point, I'll have to pull the ripcord and uh, go ahead and pack up. Well, it's really coming down now. Oh man. Hey everybody, Syntax77 here, and let me tell you what the current situation is. I am right now in my Jeep, although I'm about to get out of it, and I am in the great state of West Virginia. More specifically, I'll stick the keys out there, we're done with that. More specifically, we're in the Monongahela National Forest, and to narrow it down even more, we're in the Cranberry backcountry. I've actually haven't been back here for, I think I was originally here like four years ago, uh, maybe a few miles further up. But today, I'm gonna do a little three day, two night backpacking trip. Got my gear over here. There's the pack. Uh, in that, I do have a new piece of gear as well that I'm excited to use. It's the Amok Jermar XL. It's a flat lying hammock as the construction vehicles go by. Uh, there was actually a whole work crew here mm, for the last couple minutes, 15 minutes or so, but they just cleared out, which is nice, so it's a lot quieter. One of the unique things about this area is it's actually one of the darkest areas on the East Coast, which is saying a lot, because <laughs> uh, light pollution is pretty prevalent over here on the East Coast where I am, but here it's supposed to be pretty low so we'll see maybe i'll get a view of some stars tonight i don't know we'll see it's all blank canvas we'll just see how it plays out we are at the kennison mountain trail and we're going to do a loop of roughly 18 miles or so you could do this in two days me personally i'm starting midday and i'm just going to make it into a three-day adventure and like i said i'm also testing out my new hammock which is packed away in the bag there. I did bring my winter bag even though right now it is mid-April, about 70 degrees. It feels real nice. It's a little, little bit of clouds in the uh, sky right now, but first two days should be like that. Last day we might get a little rain. I am starting right now on a Wednesday, so Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and based on my prior experiences with this area, we probably won't see many people. It's pretty remote. So I'm just going to send a little message to my wife there. I'll let her know that I'm here safely and about to head out. There we go. A little okay message on the spot. So we're just going to go in the woods and kind of play it by ear and have fun setting up the hammock and do some hammock camping. This system I have used before, a similar one called the Amok Dramar 3.0, but this is the XL, which is supposed to be a little roomier. We'll get into the details once we're on the trail. But uh, yeah, right now I'm just going to lock up the Jeep and put on my pack reluctantly which is actually around 17 pounds base weight now those of you familiar with backpacking as yet another truck uh, goes by there uh, those of you familiar with backpacking like i was saying you may be saying 17 pounds that looks a little big uh, well my base weight is 17 pounds which means everything excluding food and water, consumable items, and in my case, excluding camera gear. So I went with my larger pack because I have some camera gear, but most people don't do that. In my case, I think if it weren't for the camera gear, I probably could have gotten into my smaller pack and saved another two pounds or so and been down to 15 pounds. But the uh, hammock system I'm using is a little heavier than some of my super ultralight hammocks, but it's more like a floating bed, so it's gonna be kind of unique in that regard. It's a little bit of a trade-off, but I think the terrain we're about to get in here shouldn't be too bad, and 17 pounds should feel just fine. So let's go ahead and lock up and put this baby on. Oops, probably shouldn't leave my spot messenger on the ground. That wouldn't help me. I'll also turn the tracking on, and she can get a live view of where I am. There we go. All right, let's do this. All right, so here we go on the Kennison Mountain Trail. And up here, there should be an intersection and not too long where it splits off. To the left will be Kennison Mountain and to the right, South Fork Trail. 
and that's going to be the main components of the loop. I'm going to do this counterclockwise. Only real reason is because I'm getting a kind of mid-afternoon start right now. Um, there's a lot more camp opportunities, at least from my research, on the South Fork section or the right side of the loop going counterclockwise. So I would say within four or five miles, I should be able to set up camp along water, which will be nice. And then tomorrow we will pack on uh, more mileage than that. And then the last day, probably a handful of miles as well, and we'll come up to the 18 total. That's the plan at least. And spring is in full effect. Well, I don't see any blooms yet, but weather-wise it is. Like I said, it's about 70 degrees right now. So, I, uh, I'm from up more towards Philly. I'm like huh, six-ish hours from here, drive. And this time of year, I love doing deep winter trips in the winter, uh, up in the Adirondacks and White Mountains and whatnot. Some nice snow camping and everything, but this time of year, <laughs> I'm usually kind of jonesing to get out and actually have some warm weather, so I headed south. Uh, up north right now, there's still a lot of snow, tons of snow, especially this year in uh, 2019, up in the Adirondacks and the White Mountains. And then even on top of that, most years during this time of year, it's what they would call mud season up in New England. And it's just a sloppy mess as everything kind of falls out. So I like to come down here in the spring and uh, get the warmer temps and plunge right in the spring. And there's one of the blue blazes there. You can see plastic diamonds to keep you on task. I will be as usual. If you're interested in doing this loop yourself, I'll, I'm recording all the GPS data, so you can check the video description. I'll put a link down there and you can download it. Of course, <laughs> as I speak of mud and spring thaw, no matter where you go, we're gonna get that to some extent. So we're getting a little bit of that here, but we'll see how it develops. <sighs> nice and quiet though, now that we got away from that road. In fact, here's our intersection right here. So, kind of some mountain that way, back to the parking lot over there. And we're going to do South Fork number 243 and Cow Pasture Trail, apparently, is this way. All right. Looks like a fire service road. We'll see how long that lasts. Easy on the legs, I guess. about three miles in and looks like we are to a road crossing now it's not a highway per se basically a uh, gravel road South Fork Trail that's us Junction trail number 244 it doesn't say the name but I know from my notes we're not doubling back that way that's basically the direction that we came so I'm gonna head over here road branches off over there all right road hike it is for a little bit plenty of water around here too uh, I've been tagging it on my GPS as I go but that is as I mentioned the reason that I came this way um, I haven't even bothered to fill up because I brought like two and a half liters got a bottle there and bottle there and i killed this one i just keep that right there on my pack but i uh really probably could have carried a lot less today at least and then tonight we'll 
be camping by water anyway, so we'll be uh, good to go. Well, it's been, I would say, over a mile, probably a mile and a half on this gravel road. And uh, if there's any mistaking, it's a road. <laughs> That's a legit bridge right there and a ton of water. And according to my notes and research, uh, just past this bridge should be what's uh, at least referred to as a shelter. Now, I'm not sure what that's going to look like. Uh, my plan is to go beyond it, about a half mile, and get to what is listed as a good campsite. Actually, right over here is, apparently, that would be a shelter. And you got the uh, picnic bench right underneath of it. So that's nice. Not bad. Uh, I want something a little more secluded, though. South Fork Shelter. You got a little grate over the fire pit and everything. So. Oh, yeah. Uh, okay, so maybe it's horse action because there is a hitching post right there. So maybe they uh, get some horses coming in here. So at this point, it is... 543 somehow now remember I didn't leave until 2 30 close to 3 by the time I really got myself together <sighs> so I have two hours of daylight something like that and a half mile to go I believe all right well I see a sign up here this should be lost run and that yep that's what it says so we got the river over here and then should be a connecting uh, creek, stream, whatever you want to call it. Yep, right there. Lost run. And there should be a campsite around here. I've seen a few as I've been hiking along right on the road. Uh, one right back up there. But I'd like to be a little off the road. I don't see a fire pit. That's good. Real question is, uh, is there going to be ideal trees for my hammock set up? And I would say we can pull something off. Although I see, what's this? There's a bike here. Um, hmm. All right. Don't want to encroach on that. Speaking of bicycles, I actually saw a, uh, there's another person on the bike going down the trail and it looked like a fisherman. He had uh, some fishing gear on his back, like a vest and a fishing pole and everything on a bicycle. So it seems like a good opportunity around here. But let's backtrack right over here and through the woods, I saw a fire pit. So let's see if maybe we can clean that. Is it through here? It's a bit of a herd path and some mud. Let's see what we got. I definitely see a clearing over here. Oh, it's nice and flat. There's water all over, so I'm not worried about that. Well, this might be it. I think we're gonna clean this. <laughs> what do we got here? Some uh, some pots and pans. I'm actually doing backpacking food on this trip. But it would have been nice. Got yourself a pot. Somebody left there and it's nice. And a grill grate. Look at that. Not bad. And the water is right over there. Yeah. I think we're here. I think this is it. Oh, look at this too. We got a... Wow. Somebody rigged up a... Basically a bear pole. So we can, uh, although that's not that high, I don't mean to be a stickler, but I can almost touch the top. So it's a little low considering your bag's going to hang down. I don't think I'm going to use that. Plus it's going to be right next to where I'm camping. I would prefer, I'll just walk into the woods and hang a bear line. Maybe 15 feet in the air, four feet away from the trunk of the tree. Bears do climb, but this looks, uh, 
looks pretty good. Now, speaking of bears and bear bags, um, that would be fine for just keeping away small critters, mice, fox, uh, stuff like that, squirrels. But Cranberry uh, Backcountry is actually a black bear sanctuary. There's no hunting allowed here of black bears. And uh, they are prevalent. I actually saw one on the road while I was driving in. So I'm going to be cautious, like I said, and hang up somewhere else. But this looks good. <sighs> oh, that feels good to get off. Oh, whew, shoulder tight. So let's get out our stuff here. Now in the pack here, got my larger pack. Like I said, my EMS Long Trail 70. I've had this for uh, eight years, I think. And I packed all my hammock stuff in the bottom. So I got the Amok Jamar XL right here. It is XL, so the regular one is recommended for six foot tall. I think they actually say six foot one. Um, I'm five foot 11, I've never had a problem with the other version, but some guys who are closer to six foot, they kind of said that it was a little cramped. So they came out with this XL version, which is good for, at least according to them, my friends in Norway, seven foot tall. So if you're Viking height, seven foot tall, or your shack or something, uh, you should be all right in this. Little heavier, it's about a half pound heavier. The whole system is two and a half pounds instead of two pounds. Um, it's not ultra light, which is what I usually do. But for this terrain and everything, I thought it'd be pretty cool. And it's gonna be comfy, you'll see when I set it up. So we got that. And then instead of an under quilt, their system is designed to use a pad, which I showed in that other video. In that video, I used a big Agnes uh, sleeping pad that worked pretty well, it was my wife's. But they have their custom made Amok Fuel XLs. It has a pump bag included, we'll get into that. And then a tarp. Both of these actually, the tarp and the pad are around a pound and a half. I'll put the actual weights up top here. But there you go, tent spikes with that and everything. So I'm gonna set that up. And uh, yeah, select some trees here. Huh. I think actually, honestly, I might set up right underneath of what they have set up as a bear hole. All right, Kenneth body is up. Now, as I mentioned earlier, for those of you uh, familiar with hammocks, it's gonna run this way. Kind of different, right? I got the buckle system up. Probably show that in finer detail in a future video. You got the ridge line here. Uh, the bug net is stowed away back here. But first things first, doesn't have a lot of shape right now, right? So we need the sleeping pad. Like I said before, I was using a big Agnes. So this is my first experience with this pad. So here is my pump. Trap some air. And then I can push through it. Now I know my wife's big Agnes pad, she uses it for tent camping as well as in the previous Amok, but it takes a lot of breath to fill up. So I got the opening right there on the sleeping pad and here's the pump bag right here with the little connector. It snaps in, easy, nice. Spread that back out. That is a big, <laughs> pad. All right, so twist it. I don't think I got a lot of air in there, but oh, okay. Well, better than hyperventilating. And because of that one-way valve, I don't have to panic and worry about it losing air when I catch the next batch. Give it a twist. I think that's the third pump I did. So it's full. Uh, usually, as the temp drops, air pressure drops and you might have to throw an extra breath or two into your sleeping pad uh, right before bed, so we'll do that later. Although, key point here, I just filled it with actual air from around me. Usually, when I'm doing this, I'm doing it with my breath, which is very hot, about 98 degrees, 
and then especially in winter or cool months um, the air temperature is like 60 degrees or maybe 30 or maybe negative 10 whatever and as that air settles down and cools the pressure goes down but because I didn't use my breath I think I'll have less of a problem with this uh, pressure going down later on but we'll see all right so inside here there is a zipper so I'm going to slip it in there and this is going to give me the uh, shape and structural integrity that I need tonight have a nice sleep loading in the air pull it around and then it kind of overlaps zips up there we go all right so now i got a floating bed got to adjust this tension a little bit and dial it in and then of course next i will do the tarp the board we set that up next and uh we'll have a little shelter and a little home for tonight and then maybe some dinner because I'm getting pretty hungry. Ooh. Oh man. Yeah. Hard to uh, describe, but it's just so flat compared to a regular hammock. I mean, it's, it's a suspended sleeping pad, basically. And then you can take it and you can adjust it into sitting mode as well. Let's see if we can do that. Oh yeah. Chilling out, eating pasta in here in no time. <sighs> A little fire pit right there. I'll be, uh, I'll be in good shape. Just lounging. Not bad. And then when it's time for bed, I'll just hit the tabs. And go to sleep. And if my head's hanging too low, I'll just, uh, Pull it up a little bit. Basically gives me a little control over the balance. Oh, oh my god. As hungry as I am, this is making me want to go to sleep right now. Or at least stare up at the trees for a little bit. Which I might do. And then I'll make some dinner. No! I have to put the tarp up. I gotta do that. Then I'll relax. Alright. Tarp is up. Not bad. A little tensioner action. We are good to go. Love it. All right. Velde bra. Time for dinner. Call me in. Darkness has descended. It's about 8 o'clock. Believe it or not. And I'm going to make some dinner. So, got my cook pot. I went back to an Esbit system. So... I've shown this in other videos. Maybe I'll show it in the morning a little closer. But right now I just want to eat. So, got my pellet tin, which is basically just like a little mint tin. And I use that to hold my spent, or I should say partially burnt Esbit. My windscreen, a little Vargo aluminum windscreen. I'll light this up. Get some water going. Titanium cook pot here. Pour some water in that. I think I'm going to do beef stroganoff tonight. And let's see what I need for that. Windscreen on there, which is also my pot support on this rock, which is perfect. Looks pretty stable. Pull system is about eh, two and a half ounces. For the windscreen and the stove and yeah, I'd say within six or seven minutes I'll have a boil on this all right we got a boil Ooh, that's hot Ooh. all right there we go I'm gonna let this sit I think they probably say 10 or 12 minutes but I usually let it sit longer while I do chores. I'm gonna get a fire started, or at least I'm gonna try. All right, well, after a little bit of work, and uh, <laughs> probably a half an hour, got a little fire going with some scrap wood that I found around here. 
and uh, my my meal is still piping hot. It's actually hurting my hands right now. Mm. Mm -hmm. Not like a hot meal after a nice hike. That is tasty. I was talking about how remote this area was earlier too. I often bring a little weather band radio with me and I have one here, but I'm struggling. I got one channel. There we go. If I hold it out like this. That's tomorrow. Uh, okay. And then Friday we hike out. Yeah, so that's my only uh, concern is the thunderstorm morning for Friday. Um, which we did kind of lowlands today. We're, we're along the river. Uh, on the hike out, we'll be a little higher up. I think on the ridges, getting some views and stuff, which will be nice. But I really don't want to be up there doing uh, thunderstorms. So eh, we'll see what happens. But we'll play it by ear. I don't have rain pants. I do have a rain top. Uh, right now, the temp has dropped a little bit. Probably like 50 degrees or something like that. And... Uh, I just got my Outdoor Vitals adventure jacket on. I'm feeling pretty good. So I'll finish up my dinner. Head over to the Amok. <laughs> sleep in my floating bed. Stare at the moon. Next thing you know, it'll be morning, I guess. Good morning, everyone. Oh, slowly waking up here. It's about 7 o'clock. I heard my watch beep. I didn't even set an alarm. I just uh, figured I'd wake up when it started getting light. And here I am. And I slept great. I slept awesome. As you can see, I got the bug net on here. Although bugs haven't really been a problem, but... I went ahead and threw that on just to see how it is and it's just in case there were some occasional bugs that went on pretty easy last night and uh, yeah you can see a little look around the interior here it's pretty nice now like I said I've had this or I've used this system before the previous one the non XL that Amok Jamar 3.0 and this thing is quite roomy. Now, it is a half pound heavier, but uh, gives you plenty of room. So if you're a taller guy, I would say the uh, assertion that up to seven feet tall could fit in here, I think that could be true, because um, I am 5'11", and I think, honestly, I never had a problem with the other system in terms of space, but man, this thing is super roomy. And uh, here, we'll show you around a little bit. You can see it's got some nice, pockets all over the place here here and there you can shove clothing and whatnot I got my phone right there tucked in and uh, my charger over there got a little peak bag action up there that I could throw stuff in and over here another little pocket some more areas that I could shove stuff just like on the other side water bottle holder that's nice another peak bag up here that's where the bug net was stuffed into and that just zips on it is fully removable but I actually put that on while I was in it last night it went on super easy there's my little tabs that I showed yesterday where I can pull on that and pull the end up to put it in more of a sitting situation but I've, I've got it all the way back for laying down my 40 degree hammock gear quilt Worked just fine. 
and kept me warm. It did go down into the 40s last night. When I went to bed, it was 48. I'll have to check my watch. I'm not sure what it's at right now, but I was perfectly fine. And the R value on this pad, I'll have to check it out. I forget what it is, but it's, it's pretty substantial on the sleeping pad. Uh, R value is just a measure of insulation uh, level, basically. So that worked well. Nice big coverage on that Amok tarp as well. So I, I didn't hear any rain last night, but I wasn't worried about that. It's pretty substantial coverage. I'm telling you, it's nice. I mean, sure, I have super minimalist hammocks that I use often, gathered end hammocks that are as light as 10 ounces, you know, 10 to 16 ounces. So this is 25 ounces heavier than that. But honestly, tent, hammock, out of anything I've done, it's, there's nothing more comfortable for me, honestly. It's the most comfortable camping, sleeping. Heck, I think it might be <laughs> just the most comfortable sleeping. Uh, it's very nice. I think the only thing better would be my actual bed at home. But that's not out next to a river in the middle of uh, the Cranberry Backcountry. So I think this has it beat. <sighs> it's really nice. Just... Uh, the sleeping pad in here it's just uh, nice and flat and super comfortable so I like it right now it's about 7 a.m. and uh, I'm six uh, six miles or so into an eight, 18 mile loop and I got two days left so I'm gonna get up and make some coffee and I got plenty of time no rush today I think I'm really gonna take my time just relax make some coffee there you go. See, I got a little piece of Tyvek there that I usually carry on my camping trips. Just weighs an ounce or two at the most. And it gives me a little dry place to step onto. Get my boots on here. Start the day. Got my bear bag wrapped around this uh, little tree limb here. So a little more protected than the uh, bear pole that we saw last night. Right. Let's make some coffee. got raindrops. A quick check of the weather radio indicates that uh, the storm I guess kind of shifted forward in terms of uh, temporal or time situation. So instead of severe storms on Friday, tomorrow, uh, we're going to get a little bit today is what they said and sure enough we got some drops. So I'm going to flip my tarp back forward and I guess move this party uh, under the tarp. I got a little coffee going here or I should say I have a pot of water going here 750 mls got the thing filled up all the way and got some biscuits and gravy I haven't tried this before but it's buttermilk biscuits with gravy and pork patty crumbles uh, this will take like half of this pot right here and then the remainder of the pot will be my instant coffee right there but uh yeah, I should probably focus on the tarp while that heats up. Like I said, I don't have a ton of miles to do today, so if I have to spend a little time at camp waiting out some rain, that's all right.
Well, I guess that was a good call. Hunker down under the tarp here. I'm actually under the hammock too. I'm gonna uh, put it in sitting mode and probably eat my breakfast up there, but it's got eh, maybe five more minutes of uh, rehydrating to do. So in the meantime, I'll just have my cup of coffee down here and maybe take off my boots and sit up there and have my biscuits and gravy. But that's all right. Everything's underneath of here. Got my coffee, got my Dutchware sip pad, little half ounce guy, under half an ounce, little foam pad. Nice to sit on. There we go. Ah, it's actually not too bad right here. So, have a little coffee, let the uh, breakfast rehydrate. <sighs> See where uh, this takes us, but probably maybe turn on the radio again, but. They don't update the uh, uh, weather band forecast that often, so it's not like the internet. I'm not going to get like a really granular update, but we'll see what they say. But it seems like pretty much, eh, could be spotty all day today. I'm dry and comfortable. I got that going for me. Got my breakfast. Got my spoon. Thanks to the pockets in here. And uh, let's see how this is. I think I probably could have added a little more water. It's, uh, it's a little thick looking. I let it sit for <laughs> like a half hour instead of 10 minutes as I was drinking my coffee, but. Oh, I'm not bad. Actually, that's really good. Especially sitting here in the rain. Mm. That's really good. I guess I'll just sit here and enjoy my uh, biscuits and pork gravy. And uh, see when this rain stops, if at all. I mean, at some point, I'll have to pull the, pull the ripcord and uh, go ahead and pack up. But, like I was saying earlier, we're not in a super rush. It's, uh, it's 9.47. I've certainly left camp later than that on days where I had a lot more miles than this. I'm just going to play it by ear. Hang out, relax, listen to the rain on the tarp, and uh, see where the day takes me. a little more like it. Oh, sunshine. All packed up. Got the pack on. Rain cover. I got a break in the rain. Uh, broke everything down. And then it opened up again. Put the rain jacket on. And uh, just now it cleared up again. And that sun came out nice and bright. So, we'll see if that continues. But right now it feels pretty good. So we'll just do a once over of the campsite. Make sure it's clear. This is a great campsite. I'm, I'm glad actually that I ended up here instead of uh, a little further up there where we saw that bicycle last night. But great spot, nice and open. I got a GPS tagged if anybody else is interested, but I would highly recommend it. It definitely gets its share of use as you can tell from the, <laughs> the cookware that we saw last night in the grill. But the uh, river right here is really cool. It's right here. This is where I've been getting all my water for drinking, filtering. I just brought my Catadine Bee Free system. Just beautiful. Especially with the sun hitting it now. It just rolls along. So we're going to kind of do the same thing. The trail's over there. And it's going to meander and follow this river for a little bit. And along the way, there should be some other campsites that we see. I'm not going to take those. I'm going to get going on the other side of the loop and hunker down somewhere tonight that's closer to the vehicle. But, yeah. Campsite is clear. Thank you, campsite. We are rolling out. You can see the rain is evaporating off the ground. 
We just hope that that sun stays out as we make our way along the trail. So North Fork Trail goes up that way. I know from the map and looking at my route, that we're gonna stay along the river, which if you can hear it, is right over there to my left. I think it's time for a lunch break. Maybe a little ramen noodle action. Well, sure enough, less than a half mile later, I do have a sign here. Kennison Mountain Trail, junction with Route 39. So that is me, although it's kind of kind of odd. I don't I don't see a trail. Uh, road goes that way. There was a shelter right around that bend. Tomorrow I'll be I'll be heading up, basically onto that ridge right there that we're seeing. Uh, the funny thing is, I don't really see a trail, but I guess we're just gonna kind of go for it, huh? Actually, well, narrows right there. I don't know if that's a trail over there. Let's check it out. Yep, there's a blue blaze or a blue uh, diamond. So, I guess we just gotta go across this thing. It doesn't look like there's really any way to do it and keep my feet dry. I guess I could take my boots off, but I really don't feel like uh, slipping around on these rocks. And it's like, temp-wise, it's 90 degrees right now. So I know my boots will dry, although they are Gore-Tex, which means if I go over the ankles and they do soak, uh, they're not very good for drying out compared to a regular boot, but yeah, let's just go for it. It's over now. <laughs> Although looking at this, you can tell during a uh, higher flow, the middle of the river, according to my map, is actually right where I was just standing. So it could certainly be a lot worse than this. Remember, it is uh, April right now, mid-April. These rocks are still pretty slippery, so I'm just gonna be careful because what I don't want to do is uh, dump my pack, or myself with the pack, I should say, into the river. Oh, there's a good flow. Fighting it a little bit. It's not too bad, but I can see how this would probably be a little sketchy in higher flow times. Ooh, that is cold. Man. At first it felt good, but oh my god, that's frigid. Alright, let's see what we got here. I think we're in some less traveled area right now. I'm just getting that vibe. Alright, let's find camp. No, this is pretty rocky and sketchy. Definitely, I mean, I could make it work, especially with my hammock. That is for sure, but I would like a little area to uh, kind of make a home base and be comfortable in. So I think I'm going to backtrack. Plus, I want to be near the river. I'm a little spoiled from last night, so there's got to be something around here. 
it's a little more hospitable. Well, I backtracked a little bit towards where I uh, originally made that right-hand turn by accident. Came up here and yeah, it's flatter for sure. I was getting my hopes up. I was thinking maybe it would be good, but it's um, it's still kind of kind of hilly, no big deal, but also kind of marshy and damp, and it's just cr attracting a ton of bugs. Um, at this point, from looking at my topo map, the river is right there, and right I'm almost parallel with that shelter area. Um, I got nothing to prove. I might uh, go over there and just hit that shelter up. I still want to use my hammock because it's way more comfortable than sleeping on a shelter floor. Although if I really had to, I have the uh, the Amok Fuel sleeping pad. I could do that in the shelter, but I think I might just go over there and see if there's some trees around that shelter. It's middle of the week. I haven't really seen anybody else out here other than some bike riders and fishermen or two. So might do that and from looking at my map there's a narrow point in the river right over here so I might not even have to backtrack down there to cross again I might be able to cross right over to the shelter yeah that looks a lot more uh, just kind of inviting than over here so unfortunately I'm gonna get the boots wet again, but they haven't really had much time to dry anyway. Maybe I can keep my pant legs up this time. Show off my fancy legs. Uh, all right. <laughs> Pants are wet again, although they dry pretty quick. There's some wind picking up for sure, which was in the forecast I got on the radio, but all right, perfect. I'm just gonna set up somewhere around here call it a day. Oh. Not exactly backcountry backpacking right now, but uh, that's all right. I mean, a picnic bench ain't bad. I'm going to probably look over here, see if maybe there's uh, somewhere to put the hammock up. Just relax tonight, maybe cook on a real table. Why not? We're still out here pretty much alone we got the place to ourselves it seems all right this will do got the uh dramar set up in chair mode got water right over there in the river got the shelter there although to be honest i probably won't be going in there much i might even rearrange this fire pit so that uh, I can sit on the bench here and face it. Because if you look inside here, there's a big old pile of moss right there, which is unfortunate, but <laughs> uh, it also kind of, well, before I say this, I wanna say I love Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, but the shelter kind of smells like it gives me, it's reminiscent of downtown Philadelphia. It's just, I think I'll, I'll stay out here is what I'm saying. But I, uh, I do have some picnic benches. There's what used to be a fire ring right there, but it's right up against the bench. So I won't be using that. But believe it or not, it is actually eh, around five o'clock. So I think I might uh, go over in the hammock chair there, have a little siesta, just kind of, rest my legs a little bit maybe even have a little nap I don't know but pretty much just relax and enjoy the sights so what I didn't mention yesterday was I have these buckles at the uh, bottom here as well and that kind of pulls the bottom of the pad up so that I can get in in chair mode I can probably I might be able to be a little bit higher but, oh yeah, that's pretty good right there. I'm liking that. Oh, so, I'm gonna hang out, probably listen to an audio book, have a snack or two, and uh, 
maybe a nap. And then dinner at some point. But this right here is perfect. Maybe a nap. Yeah. 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 Well, had a nice little uh, siesta, napped for like an hour, got a little fire going here, probably going to grab some water, I'm pretty stoked for my chicken teriyaki with rice, and I got a little hot sauce that I've been dreaming about all day, so I think I'm going to get that going pretty soon. Actually, I think I'm gonna get it going right now. Just gotta get some water. Let me uh, see what I can do here and hopefully we can heat up our water for the chicken teriyaki right here in the fire. Because I am hungry. There we go. That should eventually heat up, especially once that rock gets even hotter. And uh, I'll have some boiling water or at least close to a simmer. Let's see. Oh yeah boiling hard and dinner is on the way that is awesome got a fire in front of me hot meal right here some rain in the forecast but right now it's clear we'll hunker down after this see what happens start again in the morning Weather feels a little, a little ominous this morning. It's only about 50-ish degrees. Not worried about that. But well, there's my alarm, which means it's uh, 7:30. It, uh, yeah, I'll have to see if I can get another weather report. But there's definitely some wind. It just feels like a change in pressure going on. So. I don't know, we'll see if we get this rain or not today. I'm probably going to skip cooking breakfast, actually. Change my mind on that. I think I'm just going to break down the tarp and the hammock, pack up, and <laughs> cross this river again. Speaking of getting wet, be a good way to start the day, especially now that the boots are nice and dry and I got fresh socks on. Go walk through some water, but all right. Break this down and get back on the trail. All right, away we go. Just in time for the rain, of course. But we'll say goodbye to the shelter. It started raining just after I actually got all my stuff down, which is nice. I just had a couple components left. So I went over here, hunkered down underneath of the shelter there and uh, packed up the rest of my stuff. And if it looks like I've gained a little weight since yesterday, uh, that's because I decided to put my rain jacket over top of my front pack with my camera gear in it and uh, sometimes I get paranoid just want to double check that I didn't leave anything here and I did not so let's head out no straps left on the trees that's never good tree straps left on the trees but thankfully I haven't done that yet but I've heard of plenty of guys who have it would be particularly bad <laughs> if you still had to camp that following night. But for me, I'll be heading out. But I do have my tree straps. 
So we're gonna backtrack a little bit here as we leave the, what was this called? House log shelter. All right. And back to the water crossing we go. And we'll finally be departing this forest road too. Fill up on water, because I don't think we're really gonna be coming across any again. I didn't look at the map too hard, but I know we're gonna be going uh, up onto the ridge. We're probably gonna be getting more elevation gain than we have the whole trip. To, um, we're gonna get it all today, pretty much. So I'll get water while I can right after I find the blue blaze from yesterday and reluctantly cross this again. A little stick to help me today. Ooh, it's cold. Still cold. All right. I'm heating up. And actually, the rain stopped, so I think I'm going to take this <laughs> heat sealing garbage bag off. Try to cool down a little bit. At least my feet were, uh, my feet are nice and cold, that's for sure. <sighs> oh man, sweating. All right, hopefully I don't need this again, but I'll keep it ready. Cover back on, just in case as well. We'll keep following these blue blazes. Pretty grown in. Or actually it's just fallen branches, but pretty beat up, I guess is a better term. Man. Make our way slowly through here. All right. About two miles in, gained about thousand feet of elevation I think at this point we're pretty much going to be staying at around this elevation because uh, I'm at 4100 feet or so and from looking at the map it's about the max height on this uh, little ridge we're doing so we're pretty much up here on this flatter kind of shelf and you know we'll, we'll gain and lose back and forth some couple hundred feet a few hundred feet maybe here and there but for the most part I think the toughest part is over in terms of elevation and now I'm just enjoying the sights it's nice up here very mossy I remember that from the first time I came down the cranberry wilderness and it's just peaceful although to contrast against that I hear some pretty ferocious winds from time to time up ahead of me here in the distance and I pulled down a weather report this morning on my radio they did say there could be gusts up to 25 miles per hour today so we'll see what happens now a nice thing about crossing a river first thing in the morning is it kind of takes the pressure off for the rest of the day it is muddy in sections and there was a couple points where I had to cross some puddles and I just went ahead and plunked on in. Why not? <sighs> Look at all these mini trees. Pretty open area here. About as open as it's been since I left the river, really. And that wind is coming and going, rumbling out there, rumbling almost as much as my stomach is right now. It's uh, 10 o'clock, been hiking for, I guess, 
hour and a half or something like that. But this is right around that time that I start to have visions of cheeseburgers, post-type cheeseburgers dancing in my head. Well, let's make sure I did the right thing here. Just came out on this wide road. Off of that. I'm gonna check my GPS, speaking of the GPS. Sounds like it's starting to rain again, too. Uh, intersection 41, Kennison Mountain Trail, and Cranberry Edition. Okay, looks like I go right here. There's no sign, but uh, it's weird. I wonder if I came off the, no? I don't know, it's weird. If I was, if I was coming up this way, I don't see, I would never think to go down there. I don't know if I cut a corner, but there actually is a blue blaze on that tree way down there and that pink flag. This is a little bit of a confusing area, but I, oh, look right here. Okay, so you would come out and then, I don't know, I would probably get real confused because you can't see that blaze from here. But back into the woods and back to dreaming about cheeseburgers. Oh, also speaking of that, shameless, uh, self-promotion here but some people have asked and uh, cheeseburger time t-shirts are available once again back by popular demand uh, check out the video description for that really neat little area in here Got a squeaky pack. It's this shoulder. <laughs> I can't quite get it to stop. Other than that, it'd be pretty quiet in here. Or perhaps that's why I actually can notice it. Good old squeaky pack. rain is picking back up and look at this this is the first man-made structure I've seen in a little while since we left the shelter bit of a oh <laughs> it's almost as slippery as that river crossing this morning oh man so yeah I guess this is probably not an ideal place to hike on so the, the little platform almost reminds me of uh a fancier version of uh, like in Vermont when they just have the rail on the ground. Uh, all right, well, got the rain gear back on. I had it on for a while, it was overheating, and I finally just took it off because I was like, it hasn't been raining in a while. And uh, then it opened back up again. <laughs> so back on it went. And we're just moving along. At this point, I think we got eh, a few miles to go. Maybe two-ish, two and a half, something like that. It's 11.08. Well, it's really coming down now. And I'm definitely looking forward to getting the heat on in the Jeep. Maybe stopping somewhere for a cup of coffee on the way to get my flame broiled goodness. Oh man. First time in a while that I've fantasized about not just a cheeseburger, but a cup of hot coffee, too, at the end of a hike. All right. Well, keep at it. Keep, 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 keep at it. We made it back back to whence we came well almost i'm in the passenger seat instead of the driver's seat right now uh, that way i can get changed here uh, without completely soaking my driver's seat and uh i got my dump truck friend over there but uh yeah 
Not bad at all. Finally got back to the Cranberry Wilderness. Really enjoyed it. Had a great time testing the Amok Dramar XL. I want to thank uh, my friends in Norway at Amok for sending that over so I could test it out and share it on the channel. Um, is it for everybody? Or no, definitely not. But for me personally, I would say a trip like this, this is actually pretty much kind of perfect. I had a couple spots with some elevation gain today, you know, a thousand foot here, a couple hundred there, but nothing too crazy. And in particular, when we were along that river area, I mean, that was really easy going. So it was totally worth the extra pound or two to bring that guy along. Uh, really enjoyed it. On future, more aggressive trips, uh, both in terms of terrain and mileage, I most likely myself will stick with the more minimalist, really uh, super ultralight hammock setup like the Dutchware half-weight hammock or something like that. But it has its applications and the engineering is pretty cool. So I liked it, but enough blabbing out of me. I have not eaten yet. I was just laser focused to get through that rain. So I am very hungry. So I'm gonna wrap this one up. I wanna thank everybody out there for joining me on this one. Till next time, I'm Syntax77 and right now it's cheeseburger time. <laughs>